Finally, we have the answer to the most controversial question in our carnivore community. And no, it's not the answer to your explosive diarrhea. It is the age old question. Is coffee bad for you on a carnivore diet? Well, I asked 10 carnivore experts at KetoCon and it's not exactly the answer I thought. Now, if there was one person I wanted to ask about coffee, it was Dr. Ken Berry, because I was curious, is there any evidence to suggest that coffee is dangerous for us on a carnivore diet? So medical science has been trying to prove that coffee is bad for you since uh, WC Post came out with Postum and spent thousands of dollars for full page ads saying, oh, it'll stunt your children's growth, et cetera, et cetera. I love coffee personally, so full disclosure, uh, but there is not a shred of meaningful research that coffee is bad for the majority of people. Now, there may be a, a very small percentage of people who should avoid coffee, that they find it inflammatory, because the truth of the matter is coffee contains hundreds, if not thousands, of plant chemicals, polyphenols. There's no doubt about that. That's absolutely true, even if it's caffeine-free. But I've done a caffeine-free two-month trial. Uh, I'm not a, a, a crack addict when it comes to caffeine. I, I didn't die. Uh, some days I have caffeine now, some days I'll do a decaf day. It's like no big deal. Um, for some few people, coffee's a problem. For the vast majority of people, shut up and drink your coffee. So that is one yes for coffee. And now I'm gonna have my fatty latte in peace. But one thing that Dr. Kemberry said was to have a 60 day break. And I'm curious, have you ever had a break from coffee? Or is it just one thing you just can't get rid of? Let me know down in the comments. But when I chatted to Dr. Sean Baker, I was surprised that... Um, I can say this as a person that never drinks coffee. Um, <laughs> I, never, I never got into it. So I think it depends on the person, quite honestly. I mean, you know, my, all I can do is speak from my experience in that uh, many people that give up coffee notice an improvement. However, about half the people that don't give it up you know, I mean, they, they give it up and they notice no difference. So I think it's, it's kind of individual. I think it's worth, you know, it's not the first thing I'd eliminate as a carnivore. I would, I would maybe get used to doing the diet for three to six months and then make a decision if you want to drop coffee and, and then see how you do it. About half people that do that notice uh, significant improvements in their health. Dr. Baker sounds like he's 50-50 on coffee. So I'm just going to give him half a point for a no to coffee. And I love what Dr. Baker says. If you're new to Carnival, it can be so overwhelming to give up coffee, especially if you've tried this fatty latte, you can be very addicted to it. But my partner tells me, Rena, you are so addicted to your coffee. Well, I can't be perfect. But sometimes I notice that when I have coffee, I feel anxiety, like a tightening in my chest. And Dr. Elizabeth Bright says this, which might help if you have a sensitivity to caffeine. Coffee, caffeine, the stimulant is bad for you. I drink decaf. I would say I, I'm not going to address the oxalate perspective on it. Um, it's caffeine is bad for you. So it is a plant, but it's a good vehicle for butter. They shouldn't have coffee every day if they don't find another vehicle for butter. butter there's no reason to have the coffee. For me, it's mostly a vehicle for butter. Okay, so that is clearly a no for coffee. But Dr. Bride uses coffee as a vehicle to get more butter in because butter is apparently so beneficial for us and it contains fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K2. But one thing I have been experimenting recently in my coffee is electrolytes. When I was at KetoCon, I tried Element for the first time in my coffee. This is the one that I chose, the unflavored option. And honestly, I was just thinking, this is so much better than just regular coffee. And Element is kindly sponsoring this video. Especially if you are fatigued, you have leg cramps, headaches, or you just can't sleep. And probably some of you are gonna say, yes, 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 that's me. Well, Element might be right for you because it contains the right amount of potassium, sodium, and magnesium without any of the crap like sugar and nothing artificial. And so many of my members have tried electrolytes and seen a huge difference in their energy and also their cravings. Right now, Element is offering my subscribers this free sample pack on every order. So you're gonna get eight single servings of Element with eight different flavors. So you can try 
everything. All you have to do is just go to drinkelement.com forward slash five minute body. That is D R I N K L M N T dot com forward slash five minute body to get this sample pack. And I've also put the link in the description to make it easier for you. Now, this one is very important, especially if you're using coffee to extend a fast or suppress your hunger. Well, Raymond Nason will make you think twice. I do not drink coffee. And is coffee bad for you? That depends. Now, if you would say the question would be, would you, if you had coffee and you were fasting, would you consider that under eating? Absolutely. What happens if you have coffee before you're eating? Sure, it long gets your fast, but it's not a true fast. You're not getting the true nourishment because it messes with your hormones. It messes with your hunger hormones. So obviously, in that case, yes, not good. Now, is coffee bad in general as far as is, it's a plant and it has a lot of chemicals? I heard somewhere that it has over 600 different chemicals. Does that affect you and how does it affect you? Sure, we know the positive effect makes you all hyper and makes you want to work, makes you motivated. All those are great things. But what about the things that you don't hear? So I want to say for anybody, I'm not going to tell you it's bad or good, but this is something personal that you need to look into. How important is keeping that coffee for motivation versus how it can have negative effects in your life and is it really worth it? Well, that's great. Another no for coffee. But what Raymond was saying is so important and very similar to what Dr. Baker had to say. You see, you have to look at your individual needs and your hormonal imbalances, especially if you have high cortisol. You need to think, what is the impact of coffee on your cortisol or hormones versus coffee for motivation and feeling high energy? The choice at the end of the day, is up to you. So maybe you want to take a 60 day break from coffee or you could try decaf as Dr. Elizabeth Bright does. And I'm not too sure about how decaf tastes and maybe it could be how Laura Spath feels about coffee in general. I uh, don't care because I don't drink coffee. Coffee tastes like dirt. <laughs> so I am indifferent. I, I, what I do think is you, if you want to drink coffee, you should drink coffee. If you're putting half a cup of cream in it and your weight loss is stalled, maybe don't do that. But I think you should do whatever you want to do, but I think coffee tastes like dirt. Although Laura doesn't love her coffee, she did mention one very important point. What you add to your coffee matters because if you're adding loads of heavy cream and loads of butter, well, that could cause a weight loss stall. And I have reduced the amount of butter that I have in my coffee, but I'm going to show you everything that I've changed on my high fat carnival diet in the next few weeks. So subscribe to check it out. Now at this point I was thinking, oh crap, am I the only one that loves coffee on the carnival diet? But when I spoke to Nisha Berry, I was feeling so much better. Coffee, I love coffee myself. Uh, I think that it's totally up to you how you want to live your life. But for me and my house, we're going to drink the coffee. <laughs> and the beautiful Courtney Luna pretty much said the same thing. Coffee probably isn't ideal. I think it has some health benefits. Um, probably not the best, but I love it and I have it every day. <laughs> so based on Nisha and Courtney, that is two more yeses for coffee. And when I spoke with Coach Bronson Dant, he had a very interesting, realistic perspective on coffee. Is coffee bad for you? I don't know if anyone can actually answer that question. I think um, the details behind what coffee does are well known. Uh, the benefits can be extolled, the harmfulness can be extolled. Depending on what information you look at, what your perspective is, all that stuff, right? The bottom line for anybody, for any nutrition decision is how is it affecting you and are you willing to deal with that effect long term? Whether it's a good effect, a bad effect or whatever else. So sustainability is defined by the individual. And if you want coffee and you don't feel like it's harm, harming you or affecting you negatively, then have coffee. I have coffee every day. I will probably never not have coffee. So that's totally up to the individual. And I love what Coach Bronson had to say. Everyone is different depending on their level of inflammation. If you have thyroid, gut, or even adrenal issues, 
you really have to think if coffee is right for you. And as Coach Nat explains, women have to pay particular attention to their hormones. I drink coffee right now. I have had times where I've given it up and the, the studies are all over the place about coffee. There are benefits, there are drawbacks. Um, it can impact the adrenals negatively. So uh, particularly women and women going through menopause, um, it can cause issues with your adrenal health. Um, so I think that with anything that you are attached to, and I am a person speaking as someone attached to my coffee. I love my coffee as a <laughs> ritual in the morning. I have given it up for 21 days, 30 days or longer at times uh, because I don't think it's ever healthy to be so attached to something that you cannot give it up and then look objectively at what is better for your health. Um, so women, if you're struggling with adrenal issues, um, chronic fatigue, hormonal imbalance, it may be worth giving up the coffee for a period of time uh, to see if you do better without it. I want to add to that. And I'll just add that from what she was saying, I agree with 100% in that the process of removing it from your routine for a period of time allows you, like you said, to look at it objectively so that you can make the decision for yourself, not based on what any influencer or, or scientist or anyone is saying is best. Absolutely. Nobody knows what's best for you except for you. So part of that process is, what is my life like without it? If you wanna really get detailed, do blood work while you have coffee in your routine. Get off it for a month, get off it for 60 really days. 90 days. 90 more. days, right? Take a break from it, yeah, right? And then do blood work again. What's the difference? Do you notice a difference? Is your cortisol different? Is your stress markers different? Is your inflammation different? Is your testosterone different? Like, there's a bunch of things you can check and see if it's affecting you. Do you feel different? Absolutely. Right? So going through that process of taking it out should be part of your evaluation. And Rob Seitz, who, like Coach Nat, is a professional carnival bodybuilder, thinks exactly the same way. I don't know, honestly, I'm on the fence about this one. I've recently cut coffee. I haven't had coffee in two or three months because I tried to remove the acidity. I can't tell a massive difference, but I haven't missed not having it that much. So I think the source of the coffee is important, but definitely try to go without it. Overdoing caffeine is certainly bad for you. So kind of cycle it in and out and see if you prefer having it or not. And probably the best opinion was from Anita, ketogenic woman, because she is so open and loves to change it up. And she is all about coffee or die. <laughs> okay, so I'm wearing this shirt. I'm wearing this shirt. Coffee or I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> um, but, but, I've learned some things today from being here. I'm going to think about coffee. I'm, I'm concerned, I'm curious. Somebody this morning in this morning session said, be curious about everything. And now I'm curious. I'm going to look into it a bit more. So, after listening to all of these carnival experts, you might feel a little bit confused about whether you wanna have coffee in your lifestyle. So I wanna give you a summary of all the pros and all the cons of coffee so that you can decide if it is right for you. Now the first pro according to Dr. Ken Berry is that there is not enough high quality evidence to prove that coffee is in any way dangerous to our health. And Dr. Berry also mentions for the majority of people he sees, coffee, is just fine. Pro number two, half the people who give up coffee don't notice any difference. Pro number three, it is a great vehicle to get fat in. Now, especially if you're doing a high fat carnival diet, according to Dr. Elizabeth Wright, you can use coffee to get in loads of butter. Pro number four is that it will give you amazing mental clarity. Number five, it's gonna help improve your morning ritual or your morning routine. Pro number six, it's gonna help you stay on a carnival diet. At least it has helped me for the last two and a half years. And finally, pro number seven, the social experience. So going out for coffee, especially when you're on a carnival diet and just eating meat, it is gonna help your social life. It's gonna make things a whole lot easier when you include the coffee and you can go on some coffee dates. At least that's what I do every single day or every other day. Can you tell I'm very biased towards coffee? But let's now go through the cons. Con number one, 
hundreds of thousands of plant toxins, including polyphenols. Con number two, half the people who give up coffee feel so much better. I'm hoping that's not me because I love coffee. Con number three, it has potential oxalates and increases acidity. Con number four, it suppresses your appetite, which for me isn't really a bad thing, but if you have insulin resistance, for example, maybe that's not good for you. Con number five, it can affect your hormones, especially cortisol. Number six, bad coffee can cause a lot of anxiety and it can also affect your sleep. Con number seven, it can cause weight loss stalls, especially if you add too much heavy cream or too much butter. Number eight, it can affect your thyroid, your adrenal, and your gut, especially if you have underlying inflammation. So you really need to consider if coffee is kind of helping you or detrimental in that respect. And the last one, which probably might be the most important, the attachment. Anything that you have an attachment to is probably not a good thing. Well, that sounds like me. So after listening to all of these carnival experts, I've decided I'm gonna try a one week no coffee challenge. It's either gonna be no coffee or just decaf. I haven't quite decided, but let me know in the comments if you would love to join me on this challenge. I mean, it's just one week. It can't be that hard, right? I'll see you guys next week.